for button. All right, let's learn about parametrics. So comparing parametrizations. So we're gonna just go through a bunch of examples and, uh, and uh, I will do that on the screen. So, so far we learned the first section, all right, where we took parametric equations and we tried to graph them and turn them into rectangular equations or that's also known as like eliminating the parameter. Now we're gonna kind of go in the other way. We're gonna take an equation and turn it into a parametric equation. Now, the thing with that is it's, uh, there's like an infinite amount of ways to do it because you can choose any parameter that you want for X or Y, and then the other variable will depend on that. So, um, All right, so find a set of parametric equations that represent y equals x squared plus one by using the following parameters, all right? So if I give you a parameter like this, then there's only one way to do it. But sometimes, and we'll see in later examples, I might say, just turn this into parametric equations. Then you can go like literally an infinite amount of ways with it. And it depends on how you define x or y first. So for A, if we just let x equal t. Now, there's only one way to, to have y be the second part of the parametric equation. So if x equals t, now we're just substituting in t in for x. And this set of parametric equations would represent this equation, but the one that I have boxed in green would just be in, in terms of two variables. Now, this would be the parametric equations in terms of t. All right, and we can always check that that's right by graphing it on our calculator. And I won't do this for every example, but I just want to remind you of that early on, that you can always graph parametric equations. All right, so we can graph the, the, the non-parametric first, so like the original equation. So y equals x squared plus 1. And then to see if we wrote the parametric set of equations correctly, now we can go menu, change the graph entry to parametric, and then we could type in um, you know, what we had before. So X equals T. And then, so that means Y would be T squared plus one. And now both these graphs are in blue. If I uncheck this mark, this one. Oops, actually I gotta go back to function. If I uncheck this, you'll see that the other equation, the parametrics is the same graph, it's just, it's only between where t is equal to zero and 6.28 because that's how I had it set. So if I change it back to parametrics, you know, I could change t to be like between like two and negative two. So that's going to depend um, on the question. So in this case, it didn't say you had to like give a range for t. So like, you know, if you want, you can let t be all real numbers. Usually t is restricted. So like if I made, you know, T between five and negative five, and then, you know, you would see more of the graph graph. Now it doesn't go on forever in both directions. It only goes on where T is between five and negative five. So you see it sort of ends there, but, um, but that's how you would write a set of parametric equations based you know, from a certain equation, All right? So if we look at B, same question, but now we're asked to, Define t as something else. So parametric equations are always x equals something in terms of t and y equals something in terms of t. So if I give you this to get the first parameter for a parametric equation, you want to solve for x. So you get x is equal to t plus 2. All right, so that's our first equation. And like, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you want the graph to start like when like when, when t equals two, you want x to be zero. So this is what you would use for that. But if you wanted to like t be zero and x was zero, then you would use this parameter. So down the road, we'll, we'll, get, more into, we'll get more into depth into these. But for now, we're just doing like kind of random equations, but that's why you might want to do that. All right, so now for <clears throat> y equals, we're gonna use the same equation, but since t is equal to x minus two, now we're gonna plug in t minus two in for x. 
right? So this set of parameters, I don't know if that's the right vocab, so I'm gonna say parametric equations. This set of parametric equations would give it the same graph as this parabola in two variables or this parametric that we did in part A. It's just T is gonna be different for the two graphs. Like T equals zero would be a certain point for this and a, a different point for that because you know X is defined differently. So if we compare them, so I'll show you what I mean. All right, so T plus two. All right, so I'm gonna keep that there. And then for this one, I'm gonna do T equals X minus two. So X is equal to T plus two. Oh, I'll take path block. And then Y, since T is equal to X minus two, I think I substituted something in wrong when I wrote it before, but it should have been X equals T plus two. So I think I wrote a minus instead of a plus. So Y would actually be T plus two squared, not minus two. That's it. So I made a mistake before. All right, now notice how the graphs overlap, but because we changed we change the parameter, like what X equals. Now the graphs look different for different values of T. So like if I, tr what do I mean by that? If I trace it, if I do, I wonder what happens if I do trace all, I'm not sure. Right, but there's a more fun parametric. So let's show what I mean. If I do trace, okay. So like when T is zero for the blue equation, which can't really see, but we did that earlier. We have the point zero comma one. But when T is zero, we have the point two comma five. So it's the same graph, they just start at different points. All right, so like when T is equal to one, we have the point three comma 10. When, for the red equation, when T equals one for the blue equation, we have the point one comma two. All right, so for the blue equation, when T is equal to three, we have point three comma 10. For the red equation, T is equal to three, we have the point five comma point six. All right, so that's all it changes. It's the same like shape of the graph. It's just the arrows may be pointing in different directions, or you may start at different values of T. All right. So find multiple parametrizations for the rectangular equation. All right, so let's do a couple of these. So all of these should have the same graph, just if we graph them for all values of t. But if we restrict the values of t, then we'll get different parts of the same graph for these equations, because they all are stemming from the same rectangular equation. All right, so one that we could do, all right, is probably since this equation is x in terms of y, it might be easier to define y as like t first. So if y is equal to t, you're allowed to do that. You would get x is equal to t to the fourth plus two. So you just substitute in t and for y. All right, so that'd be one set of parametric equations for that rectangular equation with two variables. All right, but let's say we let x equal t. All right, well now y is gonna be different. So now we have to take this and solve for y. So we could subtract two on both sides. We get x minus two equals y to the fourth. So to get y alone, we can take the fourth root of both sides to isolate y. So they have y is equal to the fourth root of x minus two. So if x is equal to t, then for the parametric equation, we would do um, t minus two or the fourth root of t minus two, All right? So again, both of these equations, and we'll graph them, um, they give you, if for all values of t, they give you the same graph, it's just they're gonna start at different points because we defined it differently. Oops. All right, so if I erase this and do t to the fourth plus two, T, and we'll go from we'll go from zero to five. We we'll increase by one each time. Right, that'd be a parallel equation. And then 
if we do the other one, all right, x equals t, then y is equal to the fourth root of t minus two. And now we graph it over the same interval. So where t is from zero to five, All right, and then we'll go back to our standard viewing window. Now you can sort of see the blue one there. Um, so if I unclick this one. All right, because we defined it differently, right? That blue graph will overlap with the red graph. It's just gonna, since we had X is equal to T and T is from zero to five, it's only gonna graph up till five because this bottom equation, y equals the fourth through the t minus two. Like if you plug in zero or a one or anything less than two in for t, you're going to get the fourth root of a negative, which won't be a real number. So that's why the graph kind of starts a little later. Um, it only goes to that point because once t equals five, that's the last point that we'll have on the graph. So like that's t equals zero, not the fine c, t equals one. Not defined, t equals two has the point two times zero, t equals three, t equals four, t equals five. Now for the other one that we set the same parameter for, we'll click that on, put that off. All right. Now, since it's y equals t, when we trace it, I guess we get a first point because that's the point two comma zero and y is equal to t. So we're gonna start where y is zero, not where x is zero. And the other equation where x is zero wasn't defined. So that's t equals one, t equals two, t equals three, t equals four, t equals five. So the graphs are different, but it comes from the same two variable equation. So they would overlap with each other and have like different speeds to them. And notice how like when t increases by one, this takes longer leaps from one point to the other versus the other equation. And you could do it, if I said write like three different parametric equations from this two variable equation, um, then like what we could do is like take this one and let, all right, let's let y equal anything you want really. Let's say t squared plus one. All right, I just made that up. All right, well then now x would have to be, if you look at the original equation, now we would take y, which is equal to t squared plus one and replace y with t squared plus one. And now there's another parametric equations set. <clears throat> right, so all three of these come from that same rectangular equation. So all three would overlap with this graph here, the original one, but like have different starting points and different ending points because of you know the way T is in each equation. All right. Okay. Um, so now I'd like you to do this with me. Uh, type all three of these into your calculator and we'll compare the speed and the direction of each curve and I'll explain like what we're looking for. But for now, just type all three of those in with me. And if you need more time, just tell me to stop and I'll slow down. So, so let me just go to a fresh graph here. All right, so once you get to the graphs, you wanna go menu, graph entry edit, and then parametric. All right, so for the first one, we type in exactly how it looks. So X equals T, Y equals T squared. And we're gonna let T go from negative four to four. And for the T step, we'll just do one. So that means we're just gonna like increase T by one each time to find these points. All right, we get a parabola. Which sort of makes sense because if you if you eliminate the parameter, right, x equals t, y equals t squared, if x equals t, then you could plug in x in for t 
into the bottom equation, y equals t squared, and you get y equals x squared, which is just a parabola. Now it does, it is limited between where t is equal to negative one and negative four, right, and x is equal to t. So if we zoom out, we'll see that this parabola only goes from negative four to four. Um, so now let's, let's craft the other one. So hit tab. All right, and then we're gonna type in uh, x equals the cosine of t. So trig cosine of t. And then y equals one minus sine squared of t. Sine of t squared. So the way you would write that on the calculator is you have to do the sine of t and put the whole thing in parentheses and then square. I'm not sure what would happen if we put squared there it might still work, but this is the same thing as that. So I don't know, you could test it out and see if it works. Um, and then we'll go from zero to pi. So you could type in the pi button here, or you could put 3.14, either thing is fine. Now 1.3, that is probably like pi over something pi over eight. So we'll just leave that. So we hit enter. And we see, we go back to zoom to a standard viewing window. All right, we could see the red graph there. Now, notice how they overlap, right? But they're different because t is different in each equation. All right, so first let's compare the speed and orientation of those two. All right. So I really could have changed. So someone asked, why do you change the T step for, for this graph and not other ones? Um, a great question. It really depends on like what you're doing, like the context of the question. And this is just comparing like the speed and direction of each curve. So, um, this one I just did one because I thought it make the, would make the most sense because t is a real number. So if, if we're limiting t from negative four to four, it made the most sense to just go up by like one each time because it's like a nice round integer. But for this one from zero to, to 3.14, I didn't really put much thought into the t step, but let's, let's think about it. Um, if we're going from zero to, to pi, if we, you know, that's from zero to pi would be like 180 degrees. So a t-step that would make sense. And again, you can really go with anything here. But if we think about zero to pi, if we wanted to have like four points, then we could make the t-step pi over four so that we start at zero and then go pi over four, which is 45, and then 90, and then 135, and then 180. So like that would make sense. But I guess I didn't really put too much thought into it. Um, but like now, if we trace it, if we look at the red graph, all right, so t equals zero, and then t equals pi over four, that would be like the first step. Oops. That gets rounded to 0.8, and then 1.6 would be pi, and then pi over three pi over four would be rounded as a decimal 2.4. And then pi would be 3.14, and it goes back around to there. Um, so it's a good question. I, I guess it just depends on the context of the question. And if there's no context, it really doesn't matter what you choose for, for t step. It's just like how far do you want the points to be across from each other when you trace it? That's all t step does. All right. So if we look at the left graph, if we were to put arrows on this, notice if I if you look as T increases, the arrows are going like down and to the left, like they're going in this direction. Because when you plug in zero for T, you get this point, like one comma one. Like if you plug in zero for T, you get the cosine of zero, which is one. And the sine of zero is zero. One minus zero squared is one. So you get the, the first point one comma one. And then if you plugged in pi over four, you would get that point. For t, if you plug in pi over four, 
if you plug in pi over two for t, you get that point, which is pretty close to the origin. And it, it would be if you plugged in exact values, but the calculator is plugging in like rounded decimals. And then if you plug in three pi over four, and then if you plugged in pi, it would take you back to that point. Whereas in the blue graph, so if you look at the speed of this one, right? If, now, if we make the T step the same, we can compare the speeds. You can see like what distance are between these two points as like T increases. So go back to T step, let's just make this one. So it's the same as the other one. I go trace. Alex oh, not doing it. If I go trace, trace step, I go one. So what I, the reason I changed it to one is so that it's the same for both of these. So look at the distance between these two points as t increases by one, and then from one to two, and then from two to three. Now, if I change it to the blue graph, we go from negative four to negative three, negative three to negative two. All right, first thing, without even thinking about the speed, like if you look at the orientation, the blue graph, the arrows would be pointing from left to right, like in that direction. That's how the arrows would be pointing if you sketch this by hand. Um, but the red graph would be going the other direction. Oops, if I increase this. So the orientations are different. So you would say, you know, use the calculator to compare speed and, and direction. For the, the first one in blue, you would say the direction is going from like left to right, like as X increases, like as T increases, X increases. But for the red graph, you would say, or as T increases, X decreases. So the arrows would be going from left, from right to left. Now for the speed part, if we look at between like zero and one, notice how much of the curve that jumps from, it goes from there to there when T goes from zero to one. If we look at this graph, when we go from zero to one, it doesn't cover as much space on the graph. So I would say that the speed of the red graph is higher because it's just covering more distance every time T increases by the same units. And we can also come up with a third set of parametric equations for, for these two graphs. So if we type that in, um, so the square root of T, X is equal to the square root of T and Y is equal to T. Um, we graph it. And now we see it's, it's a different part of the graph. It's right there. All right. Now, the reason why that happens is because X is equal to the square root of T. All right. If T, now that I do the right steps, I have to change this too. So it says where T is from zero to 16. So let me change that. And again, this doesn't really matter. It's just how often is the calculator going to graph a point? That's what you're telling it with T step. So if I leave it like that, it's going to plug in zero, then 0.13, then 0.26, then point whatever the multiples of 0.13 are in for T, see what X and Y are, and then plot those points. If I change this to one, then it's just gonna plug in zero, one, two, three. So this would be less points because one is bigger than 0.13. So there'd be like larger distances between my points when I plug it in. All right, so we see now it's gonna go all the way up to where Y is equal to 16 because I let T go from zero to 16 and Y is equal to T. So if you zoom out, you'll see that it ends in the same exact spot as the red graph, sorry, the blue graph. And that's because the blue graph went from negative four to four. So if you plug in four in for T, you get Y equals T squared, Y equals four squared, you get Y equals 16. So like that final point on the blue graph is gonna occur when t is equal to four. Whereas for the, for the, for the black graph, that final point is gonna occur when t is equal to 16. So if we compare the speeds of these graphs by tracing it, all right, so we look at like from t equals zero 
on the red graph or the black graph from t equals four, it goes that far, right? So over a period of four seconds, we'll say t is in seconds, that's the distance that the points travel. Now, if we do that with the blue graph from t equals zero to t equal four, in the same interval of t, it goes from zero comma zero to the point four comma 16, right? And then the black graph was from zero comma zero to comma four. So I would say that the black graph has a higher speed because it covers more distance along the graph in a shorter amount of time, right? If you were racing someone and you both ran the same distance, the person who did it in a shorter amount of time would be considered faster. So the black graph covers this distance in four seconds. In four seconds, the blue graph covers a longer distance. So in other words, if you and another person were racing for the same amount of time, then the person who was faster would cover more distance, right? But the black and the blue graph have the same orientation. If you look at what's happening to the points as T increases from negative four to four, it's going from left to right. If you look at the black one, as T increases, it's also going from left to right. So I would say that the black graph and the blue graph are, have the same orientation. They're going in the same direction. Whereas the black and the blue graph have a different orientation than the red graph. Because now when I increase T, it's going in the other direction, all right? So there's nothing really like, you have, there's nothing you have to really calculate for speed and direction. You just kind of say they're either going in the same direction or different directions, or you say one's faster than the other, all right? So it's like a relative speed. All right, so let me in the parameter. So I gotta have myself. Um, all right, so let's do that. Now for eliminating the parameter, there's really only one equation you should arrive to, and it's gonna be y equals something in terms of x. So the way we do that is to isolate one of the variables. Well, actually, specifically t. So we're trying to eliminate t, so you take one of the equations and isolate t. So I'm going to take this one and isolate t by subtracting one. So you get x minus one is equal to 2t, and then dividing by two. So we get t is equal to x minus one. Then plug that in. So y is equal to the square root of x minus one over two. And we just eliminated the parameter. All right, make sure that's three times the square root of x minus one over two. But, um, so that's to eliminate the parameter, solve for t in one of the equations and then plug t into the other one. And you always wanna have y in terms of x because you know functions are defined as like f of x or y in terms of x. Like x is the independent variable. So that should be like the one that has all the operations being done to it. And then f of x or y should be alone on the left side of the equation. All right, so that's how you eliminate the parameter there. All right in here, I'll uh, screenshot this and I'll put it right behind this slide. So now it's here for future reference. I'll also post this video on classes over so you can watch that again too. Um, all right, so eliminate the parameter again. All right, so this one, a little more algebra involved. So we'll throw back to exponentials and logs, all right? If, uh, you know, let me make this nice and present. All right, so again, we're gonna isolate T and then plug it into the other equation. So first thing to get T alone, I'm gonna divide by two. So anytime you're trying to isolate a variable that's in an exponent like T, the first thing you wanna do is isolate this exponential expression. And then once you get that exponential expression alone, you wanna put it into log form. All right, so what is log form? Okay, so a log is the inverse of an exponential. And the way I remember where all the numbers go is I think of breakfast, I think of bacon and eggs. So base answer exponent. 
All right, so why, why are we bringing up breakfast? Well, when you think of log base B of A equals E, and you remember bacon and egg, so that's the order it goes in. First B, then A, and then equals E. All right, it helps you remember that the base of your exponent is also the base of the log. The exponential part is what the whole log expression equals. And then what the exponential equals, it's so like your answer, is what goes inside the log. So in order to get that t out of the exponent, we can rewrite this in one form. So we get the log base b, sorry, base e of x over 2 equals t. Now, on your calculator, you may remember this from algebra 2, there's a button called ln, which means the natural log. It's like Latin for like logarithmitis naturalis. I don't know, I'm just making up that word, but it's like something in Latin that in English means natural log, but they put it in the other order, ln, log natural. Um, so ln just means the base of the log is e. It's just mathematicians like shortcuts. So instead of writing log base e because it's used so much, they use ln to abbreviate that because e is commonly used as a base. So is 10. So that's why when you just see log without a base, it's assumed to be 10. All right, so now we just solve for t. All right, so we went from this equation, we solve for t, and we got t is equal to the natural log of x over 2. All right, so we're not done yet. I just got a message. Let's see what it says. Oh, no problem. Someone have Wi-Fi issues, not a big deal. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so now to get y, we just plug that in for t. So y equals one minus five times t, where now t is the natural log of x over two. All right, so a lot of review of algebra on that one, but for the parameter part, all right, all we did was we got t alone and then plugged it into the second parametric equation in for t, and that's how we got this. Now in getting t alone, we had to use logs. And to get the variable out of an exponent, you isolate that exponential expression and put it into log form, all right? Now, let's say you were doing this, and let me screenshot this so you have it. Let's say you were doing this and you felt like you weren't sure if you were doing right, you wanted to check your work. All you gotta do is graph the original the parametric on the same graph and make sure that they overlap with each other. So let's check our work. We go graph, we're gonna go menu, graph entry edit, parametric. All right, so we'll do two times e to the t power, y equals one minus five times t, All right? So that's what our parametric looks like. Now, when we graph the original, the function, the one in green where we eliminated the parameter, um, it should overlap with that. So we'll go one minus five times the natural log. So that is a button on our calculator. It's right there. Because it's the inverse of e to the x, it's the same button, you just gotta hit control e to the x. And I think it was x over two. All right, and we see that it overlaps. Um, but because the second one isn't a parametric equation, it's, you know, it's not limited like this one, like the other one where t is between like zero and 6.28, all right? So like if we change it to like zero to five and the t step was one, and the other graph would be even smaller. But we know that we did it right because if we look at the parametric, it overlaps with our equation with the eliminated parameter. All right. Sweet. All right. Let's do another one. Eliminate the parameter. So now I know I'm going late, but don't worry. We'll just keep doing these notes. And then at the end of class, I'll reevaluate what the homework will be. And you might not have homework because it's a nice day. 
So don't stress about it. Just keep learning. If you have a question, let me know. And then uh, if you're that time, we'll just move the homework and it'll be tomorrow's assignment, All right? Or whenever we have class next. So for this one, um, eliminate the parameter. So you could pick either X equals T to the fifth or Y equals T to the 10th. Doesn't matter which one you pick, but pick one and then solve for T and then plug that into the other equation. Now, I always like to pick the one where it's X equals first, because then when you plug in T in terms of X, you could just plug it in right there. And then you have Y in terms of X, which is what you want when you eliminate the parameter. So although you can really start with X equals T to the fifth or Y equals T to the 10th, it's usually easier to pick the X equals T equation and then solve for T with that one and plug it into the other. So T would equal X to the one fifth power, all right? Because if we're trying to isolate T, we're trying to get T alone, all right? We wanna get rid of that five as the exponent. So we'll raise that to uh, the one fifth power. And now that makes that exponent one and T to the first power is just T. So that accomplishes getting T alone. But then we also have to do raise this side to the one fifth power as well. All right, so now we have T is equal to X to the one fifth. Now we can take the second equation, Y equals T to the 10th, but now replace T with X to the one fifth. which is just X squared, because when you multiply exponents, one fifth times 10 is two. So Y equals X squared would be the rectangular equation. Rectangular meaning has two variables, like a rectangle has two dimensions, like a base and a height. Um, so if you want to check your work, you could just graph this and make sure it looks like Y equals X squared for whatever values of T you restrict it to. Um, and it sort of makes sense because like, in, in the parabola, right, as X increases, Y increases by X squared. So like you plug in one, you get one, you plug in two, you get four, you plug in three, you get nine, All right? The same phenomenon happens here because if that's T to the fifth, then Y is just T to the fifth squared. T to the fifth squared is equal to T to the 10th so like it still has that relationship that like whatever X is, like Y is gonna be X squared because like these are the same things right here. So hopefully I'm making some sense here. And if I'm not, just let me know and I can try to elaborate. But let me screenshot that. Put it slides. Two birds and one stone. If you're gonna murder a bird, you might as well use one stone. That's what I say. Try to limit bird murdering, but I mean, if you have to do it, limit the amount of stones that you use. All right. Parametrize, parametrize, it's a cool word, the curve by setting X equals T or Y equal to T. So we have our options here and there's clearly one easier way of doing it and it would be setting X equal to T because we already have Y in terms of X. So if we did X equals T, that makes our life easier because then we get X is equal to T and then Y is equal to two times the sine of X plus one. But since we're putting in terms of T, we, and we know T is equal to X, we can replace T, we can replace X with T. And there you go. Now, let's say I force you to do Y is equal to T, all right? Just so you know how to do that. All right, well now, if we plug in T in for Y, now we gotta solve for X so that we can figure out like what goes here, X is equal to what? All right, so we already have this here. So we're gonna solve for X. So first thing we'll do is subtract one on both sides and divide by two. Then we get T minus one over two 
is equal to the sine of x. Now we remember from solving trig equations that once you have the trig expression isolated, like we have here, you, what you could do is inverse. So you could you can switch the domain and range. Now x is equal to the sine inverse of t minus one over two. So both of these sets of parametrics, all right, so then I guess you would just put that right there where the question mark is. They would, they both would overlap with this curve. It's just since one of them is x is equal to t and the other one is y is equal to t, you would start at different points. For the green equation, the first point, if you, let's say we just said t had to be greater than zero. We'll say t has to be greater than or equal to zero, it's a five. All right, when you, for the first point on this graph here, it would be at, you know, x equals zero comma y equals one because the sine of zero is zero times two plus one is one. So like when t equals zero, you would have the point zero comma one. That's where I would start. For this one, if t is equal to zero, you would start at the coordinate where y is equal to zero, which would be x is equal to the sine inverse of negative one half, which would be negative 30 degrees or negative pi over six. So like this one would start at the point negative pi over six comma zero. So they would have, you know, different orientations and speed to them, um, but they would both overlap with the same graph. All right, so we could, uh, you know, I could show you this on the calculator, but it'd be the same thing that I just described. Uh, let me, sorry. Screenshot everything but the reds. I got hit back a bunch of times. Print screen, boom. All right, this stuff. So we'll do two more and then I'll let you guys go on. I'm gonna just, just there's gonna be no homework associated with this. I'll make a new lesson for tomorrow, push everything back a day, and then uh, we'll just get some more practice tomorrow. So I'll let you know what the plan for tomorrow will be, but just hang in there for the next 10 minutes and then enjoy the nice weather. You don't have any math homework. Um, all right, so let's graph these and then describe the domain, the range and values for T for which the curve is defined. All right, so, Without graphing it, let's talk about this stuff, right? X, the domain is all the X values that you can have. And X is defined as the square root of T. So like the square root of T is always gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Because if you take the square root of zero, you get zero. And as you increase T, like the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, all right, so like as t increases, the square root of t will increase. All right, but there's a restriction that t has to be greater than or equal to zero as well. Because if t is negative, you get the square root of negative one, which wouldn't be a real number. It would be i. That's what the square root of negative one is. And if you have a value for t that you plug in and you don't get a real number, then it's just not in your domain. So we have to make sure that t is greater than or equal to zero. And for the domain, all right, since this is only is always gonna be positive, like if you ever graph like y equals the square root of x, and I'm sure you have or else you wouldn't be in this class or your teacher just forgot to do something last year. Um, it looks like this, where it starts at zero, zero, and it goes up and to the right forever, which means that like the domain of this, so in this case, X has to be positive or zero, and Y is also has to be positive or zero. So 
In this case, we have to restrict T to make sure that that's positive, but also what root T equals can only be positive numbers. So the domain for this would also be uh, X is greater than or equal to zero. Now for the range, you have to think of like the same way, like what could Y equal? All right, so domain X is greater than or equal to zero. All right, for this one, um, if we were to graph like Y, if you just were to graph this right here, where Y is the Y axis and the X axis, we actually call it T. All right, if the square root of T, Y equals square root of T looks like this, then Y equals two times the square root of T would start at the same point, have the same domain and range, but it would be like vertically stretched up one or like all the Y coordinates would get doubled. So it'd be like, it'd be like dilated vertically. Then the plus five would move it up five and it would look like this. So although T could still be any positive number because we're just taking the square root of T, Y like this will have a range of like y is greater than or equal to five. So this parametric, because this expression here has to be greater than or equal to five, the range is all the values that y could be, all right, y is gonna be greater than or equal to five. All right, now you could check this with a calculator just by graphing it and looking at it. So we'll do that now, but you can also do all this without a calculator. All right, so the last thing that we'll do is just check all these, these three things, that the domain is X is greater than zero, that the range is Y is greater than equal to five, and that uh, T is greater than or equal to zero with the calculator, all right? And then we'll call it a day. So we'll do that one tomorrow. Open up a new graph. You didn't have to open up a new graph. I just like to clean slate it. Parametrics. Um, right, so first, I'm just going to make this go between negative five and five, so we could see. Actually, yeah, that's fine. And then we'll make the t step one. All right, and then we'll go square root of t and two times the square root of t plus five. So now we have this. We can see it's. Kind of similar to what I was graphing, but a little different. Uh, so we're going to zoom out. All right, so it looks kind of funky there. Now, if we were to increase t from negative 5 to 5 to negative 5 to 15, like notice how it's growing towards the right. I make that like 20, 25, 35, right? It's getting longer because now, you know, we're increasing T, so we're increasing the possible values for X and Y. Um, and we can, like T could really be anything, like we can make it like 100 and just gonna keep going until T reaches 100. But if I were to increase, if I were to decrease the, the lower bound for T like to negative 10, like nothing's happening on the other end, because if we were to trace this, we would see, okay, like when T equals zero, that's that point, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, but if we go in the other direction, two, one, zero, now negative one, see how it's saying it's not defined because we're plugging in values for T and we're getting X is equal to the square root of negative two, which isn't a real number. So that's how you kind of check like the possible values for T. Like you can plug in values that you had for T and make sure that there's points that are graphed. Like we had T is greater than zero. So if you plug in any or greater than or equal to zero. So if we plug in any value greater than or equal to zero, like we should get a point. But if we plug in something that's not in our range, like negative five, like something that's not greater than or equal to zero, we don't get a point. And then um, you could see that like the leftmost point is, is right here. And that's also the lowest point. So the domain has to be everything greater than zero to the right of that. And then the range would be everything greater than or equal to five. All right. 
So what I'd like you to do for homework is just digest this. You don't have to submit anything, just kind of think about it, go for a walk, enjoy the weather. And if you have any questions, just ask tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'll rework the plans, but we'll, we'll do this problem together. And then I'll give you time to do these problems here. And maybe I'll, we'll do like a Kahoot or something. So expect tomorrow to be like a mandatory Zoom, at least to start. We'll go over an example, answer questions. Maybe we'll do a Kahoot if I can find something. And then uh, for, the, for the rest of the class, you can just work on these problems. So I will assign, like these problems will be due eventually, but definitely not tomorrow. So if you have a busy day tomorrow and you want to work on them today, you can more feel free to do that. But uh, other than that, let me just look at the attendance real quick, make sure I got everyone here. I'll just take a screenshot of who's in here and then uh, I'll let you guys go. Just give me one second, print screen. All right, so that's it. So if you have any questions, hang back and ask. But other than that, you're good. Just I'll post this video and, uh, and we'll finish this tomorrow. All right, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yo. Thanks, Kevin.